Very nice introduction. I'll share my screen. Is the screen visible? Yes. Okay. I'll be talking about uh, medical management of thyroid disease. Peter has given a very beautiful introduction about the evaluation of activity and severity. Ultimately, we consider thyroid eye disease like a house on fire. And of course, as was pointed out, many patients may not be on the Randall's curve, but that is the most uh, common generalization that we have based on activity and severity. Patients can plot it at some point in the curve and we follow them up over a period of time and each patient gets his own curve ultimately and that will guide us on how to treat them. Activity is always a measure of inflammation and following active disease for several months or years, there are functional damages, functional or cosmetic deficit that are as a result of uh, fibrosis and that sets in. Now measurement of activity is mainly based on clinical activity score. There are other measures as well. Clinical activity score of more than three at the primary visit or more than four on follow-up on 10 can uh, predict activity. Whereas severity is based on UGOGO, mild is with minimum impact on uh, patient's life, where my, there would be minor late retraction, mild soft tissue involvement, exophthalmos of less than three millimeter, transient or non-diplopia, or corneal exposure responsive to topical lubricants alone. Whereas if the patient has no imminent threat to sight, but has ectholmus of more than three millimeter, inconstant or constant diplopia in functional positions of gaze, and moderate to severe soft tissue involvement, or eyelid retraction of more than two millimeter are categorized as UGOGO moderate to severe thyroid disease. Very severe or sight threatening are the ones who have imminent threat to vision with this thyroid optic neuropathy or risk of corneal breakdown due to severe exposure. Now management takes all this into consideration. When severity is mild, moderate or severe, but the disease has been inactive for more than six months, then there is no controversy. However, timing is the key. In the interim period where you wait for six months for stability, you cover the patients with symptomatic or conservative management. Lifestyle modification, especially cessation of smoking is supposed to help. Also achieving stable euthyroid status by good thyroid control. Use of selenium is controversial, but it is supposed to help in patients who have had a recent onset mild disease in minimizing the risk of progression or uh, it can also work on eyelid retraction. 100 microgram twice a day for six months is the dose that is given. Then, of course, you perform sequential surgery, decompression, squint surgery, and eyelid. Primary medical management is specifically for this category of patients who have active disease, mild severity, but have active disease and with impaired quality of life. These can be chosen for medical management and it's specifically chosen for moderate to severe disease or side threatening disease. Patients having symptomatic exophthalmos, disabling diplopia in primary position and down gaze, moderate to severe soft tissue signs, corneal exposure, which is not responding to lubricants and compressive optic neuropathy. Medical management is also indicated in the form of low or full dose oral steroid prophylaxis for patients who have supposed to undergo radio iodine. Now, uh, there are several uh, ways of medical management in active disease. General measures, of course, which I already enumerated. Oral steroids are indicated, and as opposed to intravenous steroids, you can see that oral steroids have a beneficial role in 30% of patients, whereas they have side effects which are considerable in 70% of patients. Whereas if you consider intravenous methylprednisolone or intravenous steroids, they benefit about 60 to 70% of patients, in about 30 to 40% of patients, they have side effects. So intravenous methylprednisolone is preferred. Intraorbital steroids are used when you're tapering off a patient on steroids or for mild recurrences. They also help minimize uh, the uh, activity of, in a particular eye where this uh, injection is given. Translone is typically used. Immunomodulators, immunobiologicals are the next line in therapy and immunobiologicals may come in as a primary therapy over a period of time, and there is radiotherapy. 
This is Yugoko recommended pulse uh, intravenous methylprednisolone therapy, where the cumulative dose is either 4.5 grams or 7.5 grams, depending on the activity. Now, if a patient has uh, activity but not very severe, then you start off on 500 milligram every week for six weeks. That is three gram. That is followed by 250 milligram every week for another six weeks. So it's a cumulative dose of 4.5 gram. If it's more severe, then you start off with a higher dose of 750 milligram for six weeks, followed by 500 milligram for six, four weeks. So totally about three months of treatment and a cumulative dose there is 7.5 gram. We follow a low dose intravenous methylprednisolone protocol, which is given three weekly. So as opposed to Yogogo, this is a three weekly pulse therapy and the total cumulative dose is only four gram. So lower the dose of intravenous methylprednisolone, lower is the side effects, that is a presumption. And giving a gap of at least three weeks between each pulse helps in minimizing complications. And we go by uh, chemotherapy logic where every pulse takes away about 60 to 70% of activated T lymphocytes. So uh, the regeneration time for activated T lymphocytes is about two to three weeks. So timing is possibly the key. Giving weekly intravenous methylprednisolone has slightly lower efficacy in our experience as compared to three weekly intravenous methylprednisolone. Here we begin with a loading dose of 500 milligram every day for three days. That is pulse one, followed by weekly, three weekly pulse of 500 milligram for six pulses. That's about four and a half months of treatment. And sometimes at pulse four, we bring in immunomodulators, which are either azathioprine, mycophenolate, mofetil, or methotrexate. Immunomodulators can be steroid sparing and they're very gently handshake with the intravenous methylprednisolone. As we withdraw IVMP, immunomodulation would have started taking effect. We look at three endpoints. One is exothalmus, extraocular motility restriction, and disease activity. This is an example of a patient. This is the appearance pre-treatment. And this is after six pulses of intravenous methylprednisolone. You can see that activity has minimized and so has her exothalmus. Not very remarkable, but there is appreciable reduction in exothalmus. This is an asymmetrical thyroid disease where this patient manifested with severe exothalmus in the right eye. And after six pulses of intravenous methylprednisolone and oral azathioprine, his uh, activity has come down and so has exophthalmus. One more similar example of uh, a patient with low dose intravenous methylprednisolone followed by six months of oral azathioprine, activity and exophthalmus and retraction all have come down. In our series of 117 eyes of 81 patients, we found mean improvement in exothalmus of 2.7 millimeter. About 60% of patients had improvement of more than or equal to 3 millimeter. Ocular motility and diplopia, you can see in this patient that uh, his left eye is not moving much in upcase, whereas following intravenous methylprednisolone pulse therapy, eye movement has improved and his dip diplopia has settled down. And he also had reduction in eyelid retraction. This patient remarkably benefited by intravenous methylprednisolone and azathioprine. You can see that she had manifest strabismus here with severe diplopia. Following treatment, her eye has normalized in position and her diplopia has alleviated. One more example of a patient where uh, there was restricted motility in upcase with consequent diplopia, which has normalized following treatment. And you can... Uh, Look at the CT scan of the same patient. This is pre-treatment appearance and this is post-treatment reduction in, in the thickness of inferior rectus muscle. One more patient where the right eye has uh, difficulty in moving down and normalized following intravenous methylprednisolone and oral mycophenolate mofetil and diplopia has got alleviated. About 60% of patients in our series benefited by a reduction or improvement in diplopia in primary position in, in down gaze by intravenous methylprednisolone low dose pulse therapy followed by immunomodulation. Coming to remission of disease activity, this patient has benefited both in terms of exothalmus and disease activity by IVMP and uh, azathioprine. 
this patient needed rituximab uh, uh, and he was not willing for surgery and his disease activity has minimized but not completely gone. We found that about 90% of patients have remission from disease activity with intravenous methylprednisone pulse therapy and immunomodulation. Clinical activity score came down from uh, 7.1 to begin with to 1.2 following treatment. And as compared to oral prednisolone alone or intravenous methylprednisolone alone in published series, combining IVMP with immunomodulation seems to have a beneficial effect. In patients with UGOGO severity, side threatening where there is imminent threat to vision or disturbed optic neuropathy, there is a high dose protocol where you begin with 500 to 1000 milligram every day for three days and followed by a weekly injection of the same dose. At the end of two weeks, you decide if the patient is responding to treatment, you continue as was described for moderate to severe severity. But if there is no improvement in two weeks, or if there is recent onset choroidal folds or luxation of the eye, which is not responding to conservative treatment, then prompt decompression is advocated. This is a patient who came with disturbed optic neuropathy and severe chemosis. That was his appearance of extraocular muscle. Following two weeks of treatment and a gentle extreme temporal suture tarsorophy, he uh, responded quite dramatically. But in patients who have persistent choroidal folds of this sort, which does not respond to, although his optic disc congestion, optic disc edema has responded, choroidal folds have uh, remained persistent, there is an argument for early orbital decompression. There are new firefighting techniques in the form of biologicals, which of course uh, the next speaker is going to speak about. Biologicals are uh, many, and it all depends on uh, which receptor are you targeting. Anti-CD20 is rituximab, which is very commonly available in India. Anti-tumor necrosis factor inhibitor drugs are etanercept and infliximab. And there are, there are anti-IL-6 receptor inhibitors, and the new kid on the block is teprotumumab, about which there is the next talk. Uh, this is a patient who benefited with rituximab, but not very remarkably. This patient had already received intravenous methylprednisolone and azathioprine. Following rituximab treatment, her right eye, which was in fixed ESO, has kind of started moving just a little bit. So rituximab helps, but not so much. Whereas in young individuals, rituximab seems to work much better. This was a young individual with rather asymmetric thyroid eye disease. Right eye is inflamed and active. Following rituximab, two injections of 500 milligram at two weekly interval, he, uh, his activity had a remission and his exothalmus also reduced remarkably. For patients with eyelid retraction, levator resection, recession is advocated, but they always have complained that their lid crease is not symmetrical. Like this patient has a good correction, but her lid crease is not symmetrical in some, some amount of flattening of the lid contour. They're not very happy with it. So we uh, use in uh, subconjunctival translone very close to the levator aponeurosis in these patients with good effect. This is a patient who has received two injections of uh, subconjunctival translone, two injections six weekly apart for her lid retraction and she has normalized. One more similar patient where there was uh, bilateral lid retraction which responded to two injections of translone two months apart. This is a patient with unilateral uh, severe lid retraction, which has come down. She also had difficulty in extraocular motility. So we in injected translone close to her inferior rectus and medial rectus and her motility also seems to have improved uh, following uh, this injection. You can see restricted motility here, which is kind of improved after two injections of translone close to her inflamed inferior rectus muscle. So this is the management protocol that we follow. If it's a mild thyroid eye disease, then control thyroid status, use selenium in recent onset mild disease, use lubricants, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and oral steroids, quit smoking, intra-LPS steroids for eyelid retraction, and then you observe the patient. If the patient has quality of life issues and you need to treat, then you can start these patients on either oral steroids or low-dose IVMP pulse therapy. If they have functional deficit, then you start them on sequential surgery. In moderate to severe thyroid disease, you start with low-dose intravenous methylprednisolone pulse therapy. If there is good sustained response, you simply observe and sequentially perform surgery. 
If the response is suboptimal, then you can consider intraorbital steroids, low dose radiation, or maintenance systemic immunosuppressants or immunobiologicals. In patients with severe thyroid threatening disease, we begin with high dose intravenous methylprednisolone pulse therapy. If there is good response in two weeks, you can maintain them on systemic immunosuppressants or immunobiologicals and do sequential surgery. If there is sub suboptimal response, then of course you have to prioritize them for early orbital decompression. This is a summation of uh, published data where you find that if the disease is inactive at the time of surgery with prior primary medical treatment, then recurrence of disease activity is only 2 to 15% if you were to do decompression. Whereas if the patient were to have active disease at surgery without prior uh, medical treatment, then the chance of disease activity recurrence is 24 to 40%. So there's a substantial increase in recurrence in disease activity following surgery. If the patient were to be active at the time of orbital decompression, and if the patient has not been pre-treated with intravenous methylprednisolone. So in some summary, I would say that medical management of TED is indicated in, as primary management in moderate to severe active TED and severe active disease with threat progression. Intravenous methylprednisolone, oral immunomodulation, and rituximab have been the escalating approach, but with immunobiologicals in the picture, we might, might have a totally uh, changed strategy in, in times to come. There is reasonable success with about 60% reduction in exophthalmos and diplopia, but about 80 to 90% reduced activity with this protocol. And of course, biologicals are knocking on the door. So thyroid eye disease is a like a house on fire, and you have to douse the fire with all this that I have described before we rebuild the house. Thank you so much.